Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back to Bible Read Along. Um, thank you for your grace with us, your patience with us. We have not been live the last few days. Uh, we are still dealing with um, an emergency situation with Ashley's father, and we're kind of just in limbo right now, just waiting to find out what is going to happen. And so we ask for your prayers. Please bring bring prayers. We are believing for a miracle. And so we ask that you would pray the same, that God touches his body and bring life and healing in Jesus' name. My name is Daniel. For those that don't know me, welcome. We are so glad you've decided to join us today for Bible Read Along. I'm here with my wife, Ashley, and uh, we are currently working through the book of Acts, and today is chapter 25, chapter 25, and so if you have a Bible, grab one, if not, the words will be on the screen, and uh, we are just so glad to have you here, there is lots of stuff going on with Bible Read Along, um, more stuff all the time, uh, but you can find us on Facebook and YouTube for video. You can find us on podcast for audio. We also have a TikTok channel that has smaller content um, under three minutes that you may enjoy just encouraging, inspirational, quick little messages and verses and singing and, you know, just some fun stuff on there. So if you want to check that out, check it out. Also, have you wanted to increase your prayer life? Have you ever thought, boy, I wish I could pray every day consistently and, and build that prayer life routine? Great news. Oops, that's the wrong thing there. Other great news. Great news. You can join us for free this month for our online course, the Acts of Prayer course. We are teaching this every Sunday. Um, at 2 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Eastern. Find out what that local time zone means for you. And uh, we would love for you to join us because this is a great course. There is a book available. You do not need the book to do the course, but the book is the Acts of Prayer 30-Day Prayer Challenge. And uh, I would encourage you to buy it, but not needed. And this is, there's only a couple more weeks of this being free and then this will actually be put together packaged as a course for sale through Bible Read Along where you purchase the course, the notes, the book, all for one price and uh, we are working on that right now but we're only offering this free for a couple more weeks. The reason we're doing that is we wanted to get the word out about it but we also want your feedback. We would love for you to come be a part of it and let us know. So it's two hours every Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Eastern. And we go through prayer, the acts of prayer, how to do it, what it means. We go through the history of prayer, prayers in the Bible, how to use scripture and pray scripture. And it is a really great course. So if you would like to be a part of that, please let us know. You do need to register just so that we can send you the notes and the email. Um, that's it. So if you'd like to be a part of that, let us know. Let's go to our chat here for a minute. Thank you guys again for joining with us, being here. I know it's been a little bit of a messy week. Um, so we just really appreciate your your grace and your prayers. Me and Ashley are here. Lisa's here. Hello, friends. Karina, good morning. Matthew from Kelowna, B.C., Mary Israel, welcome. Um, I'm not sure if you've been around before or if we've had the chance to meet, but welcome. Glad you're here. Um, where are you from, Mary? Please let us know. Nelson Terry, welcome. Again, I'm not sure. Some names, some new, new names here that I'm not familiar with, so welcome. If you're new, please tell us where you're from. We would just love to hear. Valentina from California, welcome. Sarah Grace 
Patterson, one of our amazing CR leaders in the Central Alberta region. So glad you are here. Grace, um, Sarah has done the prayer course, Sarah, and Matthew have done it. What did you guys think? Type in the comments just a quick little yes, do it. No, don't do it. <laughs> uh, what were your thoughts? But type in the comment and just let us know. Mary Israel is from Missouri. Well, welcome. We are so glad to have you here with us. And if you are new, our goal here is we just read one chapter of scripture each and every day and uh, try and explain context and go through. Um, we highlight principles. We highlight some leadership. We highlight recovery, those kind of things. So let's do it. Let's dig into the word of God today. Let's pray and then get ready for Acts 25. So Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your word. Lord, there is literal, literal blood shed to preserve this word of God. Not just your own, but the martyrs, the Christians, the fathers of faith that pers persevered to see this put into our language and also to see this spread around the world in multiple languages. So Lord, we just ask that our hearts be open, our minds be open, that we receive what you have for us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. If you are ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and type in the chat. I'm ready. And Matthew says, I love the Acts of Prayer course. It has changed his life. Um, I'm not saying this lightly. Like literally every, I keep saying literally so much. I hate that. Literally. Um this is very real that almost every person we've heard back from that has taken this course, it has changed their prayer life. Um, I heard this week from a coworker and he's been doing it, praying it every day, going through it. And, you know, this is changing the way he prays. And I would highly encourage you, if you have a few hours on a Sunday, join us for the acts of prayer. If you don't have a few hours, we are actually offering you a video of it for free. You still just have to register as if you're going and you get the video. So um, go register, go register, go register. All right. Welcome, Maureen. We're glad you're here. Okay. Acts chapter 25. Are you ready? Let's do this. We are in the middle of Paul's trial. He's been being brought before leaders, politicians, religious leaders, moved around Jerusalem, to Rome, to Caesarea. To, so he's all over the place. Let's dive in. Right now he is in Caesarea, I believe. We'll find out. Three days after arriving in the province, Festus went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem <coughs> where the chief priests... And the Jewish leaders appeared before him and presented the charges against Paul. So Paul's currently in Caesarea, but the leaders are up in Jerusalem. They requested Festus as a favor to them to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem. For they were preparing to ambush him and kill him along the way. This isn't the first time they've tried this. Festus answered, Paul is being held at Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Let some of your leaders come with me, and if the man has done anything wrong, then they can press charges against him there. So that's a nice way of saying, no, we're not going to move him, but you guys come. Bring your court case to Caesarea. After spending eight or ten days with them, Festus went down to Caesarea. The next day, he convinced convened the court and ordered that Paul be brought before him. Now, remember, this court case has taken years. So this, it literally is years of Paul on house arrest. He's writing letters to the churches. Um, these kind of things are going on. He's talking to the leaders at the time, and this is still dragging on. Uh, when Paul came in, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him. They brought many serious charges against him, but they could not prove them. Then Paul made his defense. I have done nothing wrong against the Jewish law or against the temple or against Caesar. 
Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there on these charges? Paul answered, I am now standing before Caesar's court, where I ought to be tried. I have not done any wrong to the Jews, as you yourself know very well. If, however, I am guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. This is a legal phrase that Paul is saying here. He's saying, you know, I'm already in court. Why do we have to move? Why do we have to go anywhere else? I'm here right now. Let's do the court. Um, And this phrase at the end, I appeal to Caesar, is a legal phrase. This is like when you get arrested and you say, I want to call my lawyer. I have a phone call that, you know, there's certain phrases that you have to, you, you invoke and there's a certain response that comes back. After Festus had conferred with his counsel, he declared, you have appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you will go. See, this is Paul's way of saying, I want to go to a higher court. Festus consults King Agrippa. After days, a few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. He said, There is a man here whom Felix left as a prisoner, whom I went to Jerusalem. The chief priests and the elders and Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. So, what's happening? Festus is just filling him in. King Agrippa. Um, Felix had this prisoner. There's charges from the Jews. Now he's in Caesarea. He's appealed to Caesar. What do we do here? I told them this is not a Roman custom to hand over anyone before they have faced the accusers and have had an opportunity to defend themselves against the charges. So this is not a normal court case. When they came here with me, I did not delay the case but convened the court the next day and ordered the men to be brought in, the man to be brought in, Paul, with his accusers to go up to speak. They did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. What were they expecting? He was expecting violence, riots, these kind of things. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus, who Paul claimed was alive. I was at a loss. See how Paul, even in his trial, what is he saying? He's talking about Jesus. He's sharing who Jesus is. His whole trial is him witnessing to to leaders about who Jesus is. Paul claimed he was alive. Verse 20. We are in chapter 25, verse 20. I was at a loss how to investigate such matters. So I asked if he'd be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges But when Paul made his appeal to be held over for the emperor's decision, I I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, "Hmm, I would like to hear this man for myself. He replied, tomorrow you will hear him. Paul before King Agrippa. (laughs) So just another leader, another person, and Paul's just going to keep witnessing here. The next day, Agrippa... And Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking military officers and the prominent men of the city. Now, what does this mean? Great pomp means there is not only him physically, there was probably a parade. There's probably, you know, um, trumpets blowing, flags waving, feeding him grapes, fans, there's servants, you know, there is, there is a high level of, there's something going on. So now this isn't just a court case. Now this is a political leader there, the king, King Agrippa, it, the king of that region there. And, um, people are seeing this. And so now you have not only the king and, and, um, Festus and you now have all the military leaders you have all of these high-ranking officials you have all the politicians everyone's there now officers prominent men of the city at the command of Festus Paul was brought in Festus said King Agrippa 
and all who are present with us. You see this man. The whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. I found he had done nothing deserving of death, but because he made his appeal to the emperor, I decided to send him to Rome, but I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him. Like, this is like, a, there's no court case here, people. He has done nothing wrong. You guys have a religious dispute, not a legal dispute where this guy has done anything deserving death. And yet you just keep shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Does this sound familiar? Has this ever happened before? Yes, Jesus, of course. This happened to Jesus. And so let's keep going. Verse 26. I need a little bit of water. We're almost done here. It'll be a quick one today. I think I'm okay for now, babe. Verse 26. I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa. <coughs> so, that as a result of this investigation, I may have something to write. For I think it is unreasonable to send a prisoner on to Rome without specifying the charges against him. That's it. So, what, what do we see in this chapter? We see more court case circus. Paul talking before Festus. I feel like nobody wants that blood on their hands because of all that happened when Jesus, the same thing happened to Jesus. I think you just hit on a big thing. Ashley just said nobody wants the blood on their hand because of everything that happened with Jesus. You know, they know of Jesus. They've heard of the way. They've heard of a man that was crucified that was maybe innocent. In fact, he was innocent. We know that. But even the, the leaders at that time with Jesus said, I don't want, there's, he's done nothing wrong. I wash my hands of this. But because the crowd kept rioting, they gave in. And so really what they're afraid of is not only the same thing, you know, they had this weird thing happen with Jesus and now there's all these rumors and stories. He's alive and he's healing people and, and people are preaching his name and you know all of these things but they there's a political side of this that says they don't want riots and fighting and you know they don't want their city torn apart and these kind of things going on so they're trying to investigate but every time they go deeper into investigation they go this is a big old nothing burger there is nothing here there is nothing here like this is there nothing has happened this is this is in the words of a former president of the United States, fake news. This is fake news because this is just, there's nothing there. There's no substance and they keep trying. There's no substance. And the Jews keep saying, bring him to Jerusalem. Why? So that they can riot, but also so that they, they you know, there's more of them there, but also so that they can ambush and kill him because they don't want a fair trial. They just want him dead. And they don't care anymore how it happens. They just want him dead. Um, and of course, we've talked about this because this came out in other chapters. But this is what happens when jealousy, jealousy surrounds itself with the wrong company. Jealousy leads to violence. Violence leads to, you know, like this is where we are at. So that is Acts chapter 25. Um, let's go to some comments and just a reminder again, the acts of prayer course, there's also the 30 day prayer challenge available on our website. And if you're looking for a great Bible notebook, these are great for sermons. These are great for, um, there's three different top. There's the flowers, there's the sunrise, there's the forest. Um, these are great for church. If you take notes in church, um, it just goes through what is the speaker, you know, what passage are they reading? What's the context? Is there key words? Is there phrases? Is there notes that you want to take? How does this apply? This is great for Bible study. This is great for Bible read along. Those are all available on our website as well. Or if you just like what we are doing and you're going, I want to help support this. We are not a registered organization yet. We are not a charity yet. We are working on those things. But before we can even do that, we need, there's a few things that have to take place. 
So if you'd like to donate towards Bible Read Along, new equipment, um, mics, mice, keyboards, <laughs> you know, lights, these kind of things, and to help us then get out with publication, ads into other groups into other mediums um please we would welcome your donation so that is not a pressure thing at all that is a joy thing if you want to give come and give we would love to have you do that let's go back to the chat see what people are saying and then we are done for today guys going up here ready 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 amen let's do this let's go was Festus a nice godly man in the Bible, Matthew asks? No, um, he was not a godly man. He was a Roman leader, but um, he was curious. And he's hearing about Jesus over and over. I don't know if he accepted Jesus as Lord, you know, put his faith in Jesus or not. Um, but he was curious and he wanted to hear. And he also is fair and just. There is no charges against Paul. I'm not going to go into this if there's no charges against him. So he is a, a good leader. Is he godly? I don't know that yet, Matthew. Was Caesar a good man? Again, same thing. We don't know anything about Caesar yet. Uh, Michael, welcome. I, I'm not even going to try to say your last name. But Michael, you know who you are. Welcome. Where are you from? So glad to see some new names on here today. Um, King Agrippa, again, not good or bad. We don't know. I'd have to look into the history of the time, Matthew. Um, but he is willing to listen. He's willing to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Um, Mary likes my fake news comment. Courtroom circus. That's exactly, there's nothing new under the sun, Lisa. Like you just said, this is, we see it. We see like, we can look and go, oh, look at in the last few years, five, six years, boy, there's been riots and this and that and crimes against people that weren't actual crimes and these, all of these things and people that were criminals that become heroes and all of these things. You're right. Nothing is new. This has been around forever. There has been political gain, political circus, courtroom circus, um, corrupt judges, corrupt, you know, this is, there's been riots. There's been, we want someone dead, cancel culture because of, like, this is not, it may show up in different ways, but it's people this, crave drama. people crave drama. That's the, that's the message from Ashley today. <laughs> So you're right, Lisa, this is nothing new. And that's, there's two sides to that. I actually take comfort in that. I was just going to say that. Like, you know, like people we're look, dealing with new problems. we're not dealing with new problems. There's a comfort in going, you know, we could go, the world's gone crazy. No, it's always been crazy. The end is near. Maybe, maybe not. Because it's always been crazy. <laughs> this stuff has always been going on. And people want to, well, this means this now, and this means this, and there's wars and rumors of wars. And weird, Jesus talked about that. You know, there's earthquakes and, and plagues, and Jesus talked about that. Like, this is, we've been in the end times since Jesus. And I think sometimes we lose, um, there's a speaker we were listening to, Nathan Finocchio. He's a very well-known voice to younger generation right now and um, has started an online Bible college called Theos U that teaches Christian doctrine and theology to these modern issues. But you suddenly start to find out these modern issues aren't so modern. They've been around for a long time. And so our end time, our eschatology, our end, I'm using big words today, our eschatology, our end time beliefs sometimes get weird because we get off track with what the Bible is saying. You know, well, this is, there's wars and rumors of wars and plagues. And yes, but there has been since the time of Jesus. There's persecution. Yes, there's been since the time of Jesus. There's, there's riots. And yes, there literally has been since the time of Jesus. Um, and so sometimes our end time theology gets off track because we're looking at the circumstances around us instead of the word of God and the spirit of God within us. Um, natural disasters that occur. Natural, but again, you know, like Jesus said, there'll be earthquakes and floods and wars and rumors of wars and like even natural disasters. All of this has happened. 
There is there is nothing new under the sun, as Lisa said. Um, and Lisa says, great notebooks. Thank you so much for using them, buying them, and sharing them with others. So that's it for today. There really is nothing new. Um, I find comfort in that because if Jesus has taken care of his church for 2,000 years, he's going to take care of us now. We just need to keep in his word. We just need to keep our focus on him. We need to build our relationship with him through prayer, through worship, through the word, through a 30-day prayer challenge, through prayer courses. We just build our relationship with him and we just walk this life out and hopefully we can share him with others that he would fill us with boldness and faith to share the good news that Jesus died, he rose again, and if we place our faith in him and put him in charge of our life, we are saved and forgiven of our sins, and we can now walk with him, empowered by his spirit, to see other lives changed. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the message Paul is presenting to all of these rulers that he has presented before. This is the truth the church has been founded on, and I hope this encourages you today as you go to share it with others. That's it for today. God bless you guys. We will be back hopefully tomorrow with another chat, another chapter of Acts. We are almost near the end. So we got another one. And then next week, um, Lord willing, everything should be. We should finish Acts next week. Thanks guys for being here. Uh, if you haven't already, Hit that thumbs up a whole bunch of times. That thumb of thumbs, my mouth's getting tired now. Hit that heart, hit that thumbs up. Show us some love. God bless you guys. We will be back tomorrow. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com